Hello, today we're going to look at how IP packets are routed on a local area network. For this topic, we're going to go ahead and use the simple network diagram which depicts two subnets connected by a single router. Each subnet on each side of the router is defined by a 24-bit subnet mask. On the left side of this diagram, you'll notice you have the 192.168.1 network, and on the right side you have the 192.168.2 network. We're going to look at two basic examples. We're going to take a look at what happens when Workstation 1 needs to communicate with Workstation 2 on the same subnet, and then we'll look at the example where Workstation 1 needs to communicate with Workstation 3 on the remote subnet. Let's go ahead and start with the first example. When Workstation 1 needs to communicate with Workstation 2, Workstation 1 needs to know Workstation 2's IP address. However, to send the packets to Workstation 2, Workstation 1 also needs to know Workstation 2's MAC address. Let's take a look at this process in more detail. The first thing that Workstation 1 needs to do when it sends, needs to send the packet to Workstation 2, it needs to figure out is Workstation 2 192, 1.2 on the same segment as itself? Workstation 1 does this by looking at its routing table. Workstation 1 knows that its IP address is 192.168.1.1 and it knows that it needs to send the packet to 192, 1.2. To figure out if Workstation 2 is on a remote subnet, Workstation 1 performs a Boolean math where it uses the AND operator to determine is Workstation 1 and Workstation 2 on the same subnet. First, Workstation 1 determines what subnet it's on by applying its subnet mask against its own IP address. When this process occurs, the result is that Workstation 1 is on the 192.168.1 network. When it applies Workstation 2 IP address against the subnet mask, it determines that Workstation 2 is also on the same subnet as Workstation 1. Since Workstation 2 is on the same subnet, Workstation 1 has no need to send the packet to the default gateway. The next step is for Workstation 1 to get Workstation 2's MAC address. It'll check its ARP cache to see if it already has the answer. If Workstation 1 doesn't have Workstation 2's MAC address, it'll send an ARP packet on the network requesting the MAC address for 192.168.1.2. The ARP packet is a broadcast packet. All computers on that subnet will receive the packet. The computer that has the same IP address as the target will bring that packet up into the operating system and reply back to the requester. Now that Workstation 1 has Workstation 2's MAC address, it simply sends out a packet directly to Workstation 2. When Workstation 2 receives this directed packet, it sees that the packet has its MAC address, so therefore it would bring it up into the operating system and process the request. Workstation 1 and Workstation 2 can continue to communicate in this fashion. In the example where Workstation 1 needs to send a packet to Workstation 3, the process is slightly different. Workstation 1 needs to send a packet to 192.168.2.1. Workstation 1 knows that it's on the 192.168.1 network. To figure out what subnet 192.168.2 is on, it will apply its subnet mask to the destination IP. Then, Workstation 1 will match the results and see whether or not Workstation 3 is on its own subnet or if it's on a remote subnet. Based on the ANDing process, Workstation 1 determines that Workstation 3 is on a remote subnet. Since Workstation 3 is on a remote subnet, Workstation 1 needs to send the packet to its default gateway. Workstation 1 will prepare the packet for the destination of 192.168.2.1. However, it does not have its MAC address. To deliver the packet to Workstation 3, it must send the packet to the router. To send the packet to the router, it prepares the packet and addresses the packet with the MAC address of the router. Workstation 1 sends the packet on its way on, the, on its interface. The switch picks up the packet, looks through its MAC tables, puts the packet on the right port directed to the router. Even though the packet has a target IP that, is, that doesn't belong to the router, the target MAC address does belong to the router, therefore the router will bring the packet into its iOS. Once the router receives the packet from Workstation 1, the router needs to determine what to do with this packet. The router looks at the destination IP address and performs the same process that Workstation 1 did earlier. To deliver the packet, the router must know Workstation 3's MAC address. It will send out an ARP request if it doesn't have the MAC address in its ARP table. Workstation 3 will receive this ARP request and respond back to the router. Now that the router has Workstation 3's MAC address, we'll update the packet information and send the packet on its way. Once Workstation 3 receives the packet, it verifies the MAC address in the packet 
and since it matches its network interface Mac, it will bring the packet into the operating system for processing. For Workstation 3 to communicate back to Workstation 1, the process must happen once again, but in reverse. So, so in summary, as you can see, for packets to be delivered on a local area network, layer 2 and layer 3 addressing is required. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.